Black Darnell Giovanni here with the legend. There's a lot of royalty, you know, in MMA, but they don't talk about the McKees enough. I'm here with the legendary Antonio McKee, of course, father of AJ McKee. I want to say the champ. I don't feel like you lost that match, Antonio. You know he the champ, man. <laughs> Cut it out. He the champ. How you doing today, boss? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me here, man. I appreciate it. You know, I'm always very uh, re respectful for interviews because this is what the fans need to hear, and I usually talk about stuff people don't want me to talk about, but it is what it is. <laughs> Absolutely, boss. And you're here for a certain reason. Maybe people don't know. You're cornering Abby Montez, right? Yeah, Abby Montez, uh, the girl that defeated uh, Clarissa Shields, as I told everybody she would be victorious over Clarissa. Uh, so now she's got a little wave going, and uh, still nobody knows who she is. Yeah, and was it supposed to be just a one-off of her training with you over there at the body shop, or did this turn into something different after she got that chance to train with you? You know what? Uh, a lot of people don't really understand how we train at the body shop, but when she trained there and she realized, you know, how we train, it was so different than what she's used to, and she saw how effective it was in such a short amount of time, and she decided to make us our make us uh, her home, and I appreciate that. And what did you see in Abby that you wanted her, you know what, I can train her. I feel like she has that heart to, you know, hang around with everybody here at the body shop. You know what, uh, I really don't judge people based on what I see. I base them on what we do, what they do, you know. And she came in as a hard worker, and she was determined to learn, and she was consistent. You give me that, and I'm going to make a champion out of it. And I guarantee, I'm telling y'all right now, within the next year, year and a half, she will be a champion. You heard me? Right. And she has a big challenge, of course, ahead of her this weekend, this weekend. But everybody keeps talking about Kayla Harrison. You think Abby Montez can take on a monster like Kayla Harrison? Right now, no. Uh, but even more interesting, she's fighting at 155. She's not a 155 pounder. She's a 135 pounder, 145 pounder. So, you know, we want to talk to PFL and see if we can make some adjustments because that weight class is way too big for her. But uh, she's going to landslide this girl that she's fighting this week. Yeah, And you are somebody that cornered Cyborg. You've been training Cyborg for a long time. And she just won her match over there in uh, Bellator, Hawaii. They keep talking about Cyborg Kayla, Cyborg Kayla. I was talking to someone the other day. They're like, oh, Kayla would wipe the floor with Cyborg. What's your response to somebody saying something like that? Uh, obviously, they're not educated in the fight game. Kayla Harris is not going to wipe the floor with Chris Cyborg. No day of the week. I think it will be a great fight. And I think people are underestimating Chris's ground game she's been with me for a while as far as her ground game she's got a lot of experience uh Kayla Harris a respectable athlete no trash talking but as far as that uh there's a real great chance she can get knocked out on her feet what is she gonna do she's got to grab her right and grabbing her there's an opportunity for Chris to uh knock her out and I think the way we train it would be no problem to get knocked out by uh Chris yeah, and people, and yesterday, I don't know if you saw it, Kayla Harrison had a, a shirt that said, uh, Legend Killer. You know, Cyborg had that shirt that said, Fucking Legend. So she kind of was, you know, poking a jab at her. How do you feel about her wearing that shirt? Hey, man, you know what? It's a sport. It's entertainment. Hey, it's entertainment. But I think uh, Kayla Harris, like I said, I don't take nothing from her. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, PFL, y'all don't want to see the Cyborg Nation come through and squash that girl. It'll mess up your, your franchise fighter. So... You know, tell her to keep it down for we have to come over here and do some business. Yeah, and of course we got to talk about it. it's been a month since uh, the fight didn't go AJ's way, even though majority of everybody had to go in AJ's right. way, including myself from the strikes and everything after that. I know, of course, after the fight you felt a, you, were, you were upset. But now, a month later, how do you feel? Actually, after the fight, I wasn't upset. Um, in the instance, I was upset with myself because AJ had a lot more output that he could have done. And I was telling them, okay, you're doing good, you're winning. So I take a lot of responsibility on that loss as a coach. I made a minor mistake. And like most coaches are not able to come forth and say, hey, I made a mistake. I caused my fighter to lose. Me and my son have a really special relationship. And I wasn't, I didn't see that we were losing the fight by no means. I had him winning that fight all the rounds, maybe set two rounds. Uh, but just complete dominating the fight. You can look at Pitbull's face. You can look at my son's face, he was fine. He walked away with nothing. You know, you can't win a fight throwing leg kicks and attempt one submission throughout a whole night on a five-round fight. So it was my, uh, I feel it was my responsibility 
at that point to not see the urgency for him to pick it up a notch. But I tell you what, he's talking a lot of trash about this and that, uh, put up a million dollars. I tell you what, you put up whatever amount of money you want, Pitbull, I'll match it and the winner takes the purse, all right? You want to play the million-dollar game? We can play the million-dollar game. Uh, but I think the next fight, I think, I know for a fact, he's going to finish Pitbull and not leave it into the judges' hands. All right. He said right after that, he's like, it's not going to be at 145 anymore. I'm going to 155. After a month change, is it okay for him to go back down? No, nah, he, he made 145 easy. He was just angry, and he was just really caught up in the moment. Um, he wants his belt back. He wants his title back, and we're going to do what we got to do to get it. And did he struggle with any kind of motivation, you know, because he beat him pretty easily the first time around. You know, second time around, a rematch, somebody you already beat. Was that a struggle for him? I don't think it was a struggle. I think the lifestyle of being a millionaire was more of the struggle. He had a lot of free money to play with. He had a lot of time on his hands. Uh, he's a young fighter, and that's one of the things we you, we want to talk about, you know, that, you know, hopefully Bellator can get it together and he can fight more. He's only fighting twice a year, once a year. And to be young and active and strong, uh, we saw John Jones' career take a different turn. And it's boredom. These guys are bored. And when you are a high-level athlete like that, you need to be stimulated by working. And working for them is fighting and training. And he lives in the gym, but he needs to get that funk. He needs to fight. Yeah, and after the fight, Scott, and I love Scott Cooker. Scott Cooker is a great guy. You have a great relationship with him, I'm sure. He was kind of, you know, putting his arm around P Patricio and just like, this is the number one guy. How do you feel seeing, you know, like the president of the company doing that with somebody? You know, Scott Cooker is a good guy, but at the end of the day, I could give a shit about him putting his arm around Pitbull. I know who we won, who won that fight. The fans know who won that fight. I got so many inboxes of Pitbull's fans. We like Pitbull, but that was bullshit. I mean, I think the, the real fight fans... They want to see, you know, the judges make the right decisions based on the way the fight comes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how they scored that fight. Uh, again, maybe I need to go take a referee's class, but most of the people that I talked to that were uh, intelligent people, uh, the numbers don't lie, the damage doesn't lie, attempting a submission and some leg kick doesn't lie. So, you know, I, I, I don't even care about that, but like he did in the, in the tournament, he finished everybody. We need to get back to finishing everybody because he's that good. Yeah, uh, and hopefully we see AJ back this summer in the Bellator cage. But you're here now at PFL. They got a million-dollar prize. AJ loves money. Would you ever see him competing with the featherweights here or even the lightweights here in this competition at some point? Because everybody talks about the UFC, but right. what about the PFL? Right. You know what? Uh, again, AJ would come even if AJ was to come to PFL, he would walk through this division. Who's going to beat him? I don't think At 145 pounds, he would walk through this division and be a super superstar for PFL. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we're professionals. We got to look at our contracts. We have to respect our contracts. We have to do what's right. And a lot of fighters get caught up in the moment, and they neglect the fact that they signed a contract. Uh, and I think more fighters need to be aware of the contracts before they sign them because when you become successful, you can't go back on the contract that you signed. That's why it's called a contract. And uh, I think fighters need to be more uh, represented properly before they take these contracts and get these big fights. See, I knew my son was going to be a star. So I leveraged that with the pay. And you know what? Again, he he's making decent money. I don't know why you know people think he only made two hundred fifty thousand. Maybe that was what he said. But I'll tell you this: uh, he ain't got to have to worry about no money. He just needs to. He just wants to fight. He just wants to fight. He says, "I want to fight." So that's what we want to do. We want to fight. We want to come and kick anybody's ass. UFC ass, PFL's ass, one ass. Anybody you got that, that that's, that's ready. You know, we're in the gym training every day, and I'm the head coach. I'm the only coach, actually. So what you want to do? Bring the smoke. We got the, we got the fire extinguisher. And speaking of money, of course, you don't hold back on anything, on any comments. Questions I've always asked you, you always answer. Yesterday, Dana White was quoting on a Pivot podcast of saying boxers are paid way too much money. That coming out of his mouth and somebody that you've had issues with in the past, hearing that from his mouth, how do you feel? Listen, man, I, you know, again, if, if my son wasn't fighting, I would give you the full rundown, right? But unfortunately, I have to be respectable of my son's career. But let me just tell you this. Anybody that would do and say the things that this particular individual says, you have to question their mentality. 
When you question a person's mentality, you look at the foundation of where they come from. You look at their mother, you look at their father, and then you look at how they represented their mother, how they represented their father. And in the scriptures, you know, uh, it talks about a man that is disrespectful to his parents. Well, I don't know if you know the history like I know the history, but if you go back and you pay attention to what was going on, you can see that if someone has no respect for their mother or their father, what kind of respect would they have for a fighter or fighters? So I, I just think, you know, I, I really think the UFC is a, hey, legit, bro, uh, some of the best fighters in the world train there. But I, I don't think you can sleep on PFL. I don't think you can sleep on Bellator. They also have some of the best fighters, and this is why it's so important for the fans that are watching this type of stuff, get together and you kind of push that that um, that, that 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 bringing the fights together, bringing all these organizations together, and let's see pound for pound, unify these belts pound for pound. Who is really the best fighter in the world? Um, I don't I don't think the fans would have a problem paying to watch a PFL champion fight a UFC champion fight a Bellator champion. I don't think the fans would have a problem paying for that at all because we at the end of the day, we want to know who the best fighter is. And I'm tired of telling you my son is the best fighter. Absolutely. I tell you here right here from the legend right here. I appreciate you for the time, of course. Anything you want to say to the people out there and all the, you know, McKee fans. Look here, you know what? It's a father and son duo, but it, more than anything, it's it's a love. It's a love for the sport. It's love and passion for the entertainment of the fans. And at the end of the day, we want to just say thank you. Thank you for PFL. Thank you for Bellator. Thank you for the UFC. Thank you for any fight promotion that is pushing us to be in a better place so we don't have to do the things that we were doing on the streets and we can make some money and we can take care of our families. Other than that, keep the support up. Keep following me at Antonio McKee and AJ McKee 101. Keep following us because you're going to see great things happen and you're going to hear me talk a lot of correct shit. Whether they like it or not, everything that I say is a fact. I stand on it and I'll die on it. You heard the man. Darnell Giovanni Mystic Black here with Antonio McKee. Abby Montez fights this Friday on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. You see this man in his corner. Appreciate you guys for watching. Mystic Black out. Boom. <laughs>